So I was born on the East Coast, uh, born in Maryland, raised in Massachusetts when I was young. And I'm the second of three girls. My parents were both um, missionary kids. We grew up really with quite an understanding of there's a big world out there. My older sister um, was called into international work in high school. I, on the other hand, was dead set against it from quite a young age. Um, all this international work seemed highly unpredictable. We need, a, we need a stable, safe, steady person who can make some money. So I thought that should probably be me. And I was not at all interested in going and working overseas. It was really a long journey. Uh, the Lord is patient with me and slowly over time he started to just open up my heart to the world. Um, I think it was my senior year and it was with Dr. Vincent Peters. It was called Christian Perspectives on Global Peacemaking. Some of it was the content of the class but a lot of it was the life of, of Dr. Peters himself and the way that he quietly with great conviction and strength lived with a heart for the poor around him and that just challenged me and, uh, and drew me to think, what more is there to unlock here that, that I haven't yet even thought about? So life in the field uh, started in Sri Lanka and I went there after the tsunami. I went in 2005 and got kind of a taste of disaster response work. And so I would go around and evaluate potential water sources. Uh, I went around and, and recommended ways for water treatment and installed systems, and then also helped design a hygiene curriculum that was used in schools. And later on when I moved um, to Afghanistan and then later to South Sudan, I also was involved in, my main area was water. So I would design small systems looking at how do we bring safe water to communities? And then how do we teach about the importance of safe water? I think one of the hardest things for me, honestly, um, my family is, is a tight-knit family. And so leaving and being separated from family for a long time was really hard. And, but it's missing kind of the everyday. It's, it's missing the baseball games and just missing out on being, you know, part of daily life and saying, okay, yeah, Auntie Katie's part of our story here. And my family's been great about weaving that in and, and about Skyping and praise God for technology that connects us. But it's, it's missing the sweet connection of the everyday with family that can, be, that can be really hard. And I do get to now be at those baseball games and at the swimming lessons. And I think I appreciate it on such a new level because I know what it is to not have that. I think I was about a year home when I finally realized I needed to feel like I lived here because I was traveling a lot and I thought, I'm not even, I don't live in the field, but I go to the field and it means I need to be able to commit to um, some relationships here. I need to be able to plug in to my church. I need to be able to serve in my own community. And for me, in my church community has continued to be such a welcoming place and I get to lead worship still um, at the church that I grew up at, which, which is a really, a really sweet privilege as well. So uh, I am the Director of Transformational Development. I work with all of our long-term community development work around the world. So I help to set strategic direction and I do a lot of staff training and curriculum development in order to kind of look at how is our approach as a Christ-centered um, organization integrated into the different contexts and the different sectors that we work in. I'd been living in Afghanistan probably about a year and a half, and I was getting ready to go out to a new village about four hours out into the desert where there's, there are literally no landmarks. It's just sand dune after sand dune and then just flat desert. And, but we did eventually come across a little village, domed houses made of mud, and we pulled in and the women had gathered together in a, kind of a little community building. So I went and I did the training and, and at the end of it, I wanted to get the names of the women. I started asking them, so what's your name? And, and wrote down the names. And after I'd done a couple of these, there was, the women were kind of buzzing. And so I said, is everything okay? And they said, yeah, are you, are you writing down our names? And I said, yes, is that okay? And they said, well, could you, show us 
because we've never seen our names written down before. And so I turned my notebook around and, and showed each woman where her name was, and then kind of an older woman who, who was sitting down still, she hadn't stood up with the rest of us. She just grabbed my hand and she held onto it so tightly. I stooped down, I looked at this woman and I said, what can I do for you? And she said, uh, would you write down my daughter's name? Because she died. And I, I got out my notebook my pen and I wrote down her daughter's name as beautifully as I could and, and turned and showed it to her and I realized in that moment probably one of the most significant things that I could do in Afghanistan or Sri Lanka or Seattle or London is see people and let them know that there is a God who sees them and knows their name. Every place that we leave, I would love for people to, to say of our team and to say of me, she may not have had all the answers, she may not have done everything right, but uh, she, she seemed to think that Jesus loved us a whole lot. And if, if they kind of have heard too much of that <laughs> by the time we've left, then I would say that's okay. You know he knows your names, he knows your stories, he knits you together. When you knit something, you touch every strand of that, of that yarn that goes through your fingers. There's nothing he doesn't know. And he cares about you. His love for you is unfailing. And my prayer is that this love would fill you, that you would know it. Not just know it in your heads, but know it in your hearts. That you would know that you are seen that you matter, that you are treasured by the Most High God. He loves you. 